little boy was walking with his father along a country road. The night was clear and the child was enthralled by the splendour of the sky, all lit up with twinkling stars from one end of the sky to the other. After moments of quiet reflection, he suddenly looked up to his father and said, Daddy, I was just thinking, if the wrong side of heaven is so beautiful, how wonderful the right side must be. But it is by the way we live in the wrong side that we merit the right side. Scripture says that all the truth about us will be brought out in the law court of Christ and each of us will get what they deserve for the things they did in the body, good or bad. Now I don't think the saints, this is the Feast of All Saints, left anything to chance in this particular department. Saints are guided by the light of faith and reason in the big and little decisions of life. For them... Their faith is not something slotted into an hour on Sunday, then forgotten about for the rest of the week. Being part and parcel of their everyday lives, it informs all they do and say and indeed are. Tonight is Halloween. In pagan times, it was regarded as a night of fear when demons roamed around to welcome the winter darkness. Even though we know children love dressing up for Halloween, they love dressing up for anything, I don't think it's wise to send them out depicted as devils or vampires, especially if they're unfamiliar with the saints, which is the real origin of tonight's vigil. That would be harking back to its pagan origins, more Halloween than Halloween. It's like reveling in Christmas as a purely secular winter festival with little or no reference to the birth of Christ. How sad that would be. Our faith forces us to combat the dark forces of this world which will include shadowy areas in our own lives as well. From reading the lives of the saints we see where they were painfully aware of their own weaknesses and they never pretended otherwise. They were real men and women, often plagued by temptations just like us. But they never gave up the struggle. The saints are our heroes. Now if you go into any bookshop these days, there are hordes of books on fantasy and fiction. But in the saints we are dealing with real people who are now in heaven praying for us. We can't but be inspired by their lives of faith. And Catholic children should be strongly encouraged to become familiar with the lives of these holy men and women. When I was at secondary school, not today or yesterday, one of the books, one of the books on our recommended reading list was entitled Saints Are Not Sad. The impression you get sometimes is that a saint is a forbidding kind of person, sort of joyless creature who has lost touch with the real world. They say, for instance, that Pad Saint Padre Pio, who was a great stigmatist, he had an impish sense of humour that lit up the lives of his confreres in the community, not at all like the grim person he sometimes portrayed as. Sainthood and sadness simply don't mix. Actually, it's the sinners that are sad, not the saints. Don't we say, as miserable as sin? The demons of Halloween are depicted as welcoming the darkness characterised by the onset of winter. But the saints followed Jesus, the light of the world, whom they now see face to face eternally in the beatific vision of heaven. Now thank you all for listening and God bless you all. Oh.